This is Nigeria Today. The organized labor has made good their threat to embark on a nationwide protest over the lingering strike by the academic staff union of universities in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Members of the organized labor, just like their counterparts in other parts of the country, staged a peaceful protest in solidarity with ASU. From Ogun to Ondo, or Yot Washu, the demand of the union is the same and as a strike now. Tivisonese Rafiu Hamid in Oshu and Sharon Ejasa in Lagos report the students who have stayed at home for more than five months are now frustrated and can no longer wait to resume lectures. In Akure, the Undo State capital, members of the unions marched through Bejo streets chanting solidarity songs. Armed with placards with various inscriptions, the organized labor around the federal government's inability to meet ASU's demands. They took the protest to the governor's office where they were addressed by government officials. What we want from the federal government is to come back to the negotiation table and sign the agreement that they have. Federal investment is not an ASU matter. I want to say it's a Nigerian matter. We are talking of several generations of our children. In Abeokuta, the protest was led by Emmanuel Bankoli and supported by members of the National Association of Nigerian Students. They condemned the rate at which the federal government gives approval for the establishment of more private universities while public universities are grossly underfunded. Our affiliates are prepared to shut down this country if after this protest nothing is done. In Ibadan, the labor unions took their rally to the governor's office at Agodi, where they were received by the deputy governor, Bayolawal, and other top government functionaries in the state. If after now they don't do it and we don't see the seriousness in them, you know what the labor centers can do. They fly around, they do everything. We shut down the airport, we shut down the banks, we shut down the electricity, we shut down water. These are our children. We do not want them to be out of school for five, six, months that they have uh, um, been out of school. It's not helping the economy. The situation is not different in Oshun State. In Oshubu, the organized labor marched from Ogolua to the State House of Assembly and the government secretariat, Abiri. We don't want our children to stay at home any longer. We want the strike to end now. It is not possible for us to join you to protest, but within us, we are with you. The protesters say the time for ASU to resume is now. They threatened to embark on a three-day warning strike if federal government fails to accede to the demands of the striking lecturers after this two-day protest. Rafiu Hamid, TVC News, Ushubu. Workers under the umbrella of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, converged in the Keja area of Lagos for the protest to voice out their displeasure under the continued closure of public universities. The protest recorded large turnout of workers from the affiliate unions of NLC, which led to traffic gridlock in the state. There were several instructions written on the banners, indicating the demands of the protesting workers. Partners in the educational sector will be a thing of the past. Yes. But what do we see today? This is deterioration. And this administration has taken us backward for about 20 years before we can regain what we have lost. The regime claimed that it was going to spend 443 billion around the so-called oil subsidy. The latest now is that the regime is saying it is going to be 6.5 trillion. Oh. Yet there is no money for education. But there is money to pay smugglers who they claim are smuggling fuel out of Nigeria. Nigeria, like we have been told, we are rich, we are buoyant. We can fund any education for all our people. It's only the greed of our oppressors in government that we cannot fund. During the protest, I met with two 300 level students from the University of Lagos and Obafemi Awolowo University Ileife who participated in the demonstration. According to them, they can't wait to resume classes. 
my school ID card have expired because I don't even know if I'm not I'm still a student or my school will be issue another ID card for me after this after I should call off their strike. I just hope this strike will come to an end very soon. When I said that in when I wrote my jam, most of my colleagues that wrote with me the other time, most of them, even not all, they have gained admission. They have finished school, they have served and they are working. After more than four hours of protest held here in Lagos, Nigeria, workers before dispersing the government house insist that if the federal government refused to yield to the demands of the striking workers in two weeks, that it will be back for a mass rally and also it will be inclusive of a warning strike. Sharon Ejason, TVC News, Lagos. The Nigerian Labour Congress also held peaceful protests in the south-south and southeastern states in solidarity with the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The union members marched in their thousands to the government house in the capital cities of Botaka, Toweri, Benin, Asaba, and Enugu. <laughs> The intensity of the sun notwithstanding, the River State Chapter of the Nigerian Labour Congress joins their counterparts nationwide for this protest. They are out on the streets of Port Harcourt to add their voices to that of ASU with the hope of getting the federal government to take necessary action for the strike to end. We are dismayed by the federal government's paralysis and reluctance to take the necessary steps that could lead to the peaceful resolution of the issues in dispute and by extension and the strike. The state government does not regulate the economy. I've looked at APIS, another thing that is being highlighted here. It is not also a state problem. So this is simply a message which I've come to the right channel to send. And I want to promise you that I will hand this letter over to the governor. You know, weary. Organized labor also lamented the closure of universities for five months due to the dispute between ASU and the federal government. Labor says due to the strike, Nigerian students are more vulnerable to antisocial vices with thousands of workers plunged into hardship. We want to plead with the federal government and state government to help us make sure that this problem is solved in no distant time. I want to urge you to be patient. Uh, the federal government is working around the clock now to see that this matter is resolved. The NLC, a gold state, also led its affiliate unions on a solidarity protest. The amount of pressure on government to end the strike and revitalize the education system. Any nation that is serious about growth or the future of the nation must take into cognizance the need for the youths to be, you know, seriously schooled. Till today, five months after, our children are still at home, our brothers are at home, and our sisters are still at home, which is very shameful. The protesters in Delta State appealed to Governor Ifan Yokoa to intervene in the stalemate between the striking lecturers and the federal government. The insensitivity of this government, you know, is degenerating every day. And if Labour does not, you know, intervene into this issue, I want to tell you that uh, we may end up you know, not having anything that has to do with tertiary institutions in Nigeria. We are all human beings, and as Nigerians, we are very good and good listeners. That this message will go up to Abuja. I know the government will do all they can to listen to us through this time. Yeah. In Enugu State, organized labor challenged the federal government to honor agreements reached with ASU. An agreement that is 13 years old running is still being contested by the same government. And if you go to our universities, it is an apology. Our job, just as we have pointed out, is to continue to engage the federal government. Bidwa, President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, says the union will embark on a three-day national strike if the federal government fails to act after the protests. Mr. Waba, whose spokesman featured on TVC's This Morning earlier today, says the nationwide protest is not in solidarity with the striking university workers, as they are part of the NLC and the union is directly involved. He also noted that several letters have been written before the decision to embark on the protests. That this will also proceed on three days uh, national uh, warning strike if nothing happens. And uh, basically, before then, the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, strike then can uh, also uh, continue. Four unions involved. All of them are also members of NLC, and uh, their membership are membership of NLC. So we are directly involved. It's not solidarity. We are directly involved uh, as an organization. And that's why we thought that uh, we should be able to end our voice, but also to prompt for an action uh, so that this issue can be resolved uh, once and for all. At the level of strike, we wrote several letters. And uh, importantly, also, we're able to uh, try to intervene. But all these interventions have not been able to yield uh, the desired results. And uh, basically, uh, time is still uh, being lost. Away from NLC protests, Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirika has met with the airline operators of Nigeria on finding solutions to problems of rising cost of aviation fuel and forex for the industry's operation. The minister assured the operators that he would meet with relevant agencies of government on improving availability of the Jet A1 and the forex. The operators say they are satisfied with existing efforts by authorities to address their concerns and hope that lasting solutions would be found to enable them to stay in business. The minister ruled out the possibility of a bailout, which he feels is unnecessary at the moment. The airlines have consistently cried out against the rising cost of aviation fuel, which has risen above 950 naira per liter. And the amalgamated commercial tricycle and motorcycle owners, riders and repairers association of Nigeria has rejected the federal government's proposed nationwide ban on the use of motorcycles. The group appealed to the authorities to carefully think through its proposed action and the severe hardship it's capable of bringing on over 6 million Nigerians who depend on them. Helen Osamide Ekens reports. The federal government at its recent National Security Council meeting proposed a nationwide ban on the use of motorcycles across the country. So, discussions carried out deliberation. The Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, who addressed the media after the meeting, said the ban was being considered as part of efforts to curtail the activities of terrorists who often use motorcycles. He says placing a ban on the use of motorcycles and mining activities will call the supplier of logistics to the terrorists. According to the minister, less than a third of Nigeria's 200 million population would be affected by the ban. But those who will be directly affected by the decision are not finding it funny. This umbrella body of motorcycle operators, owners and repairers are not comfortable with the proposed policy, which they say will severely affect their members' means of livelihood. If 10 million of these 40 million people, they want to render jobless, takes to crime, can the government contain them? If you attribute the movement of the terrorists to motorcycle, don't criminals operate with fecus? When terrorists regrettable attack Kujie prison. Was it the motorcycle rider that caused the failure of intelligent gathering? The one the federal government instead to collaborate with the organization to regulate the activities of motorcycle riders in the country. Do something that will elevate the agony we are already on it. They should, make, they should have mass, mass on the masses of Nigeria. They should not do anything will be a counterproductive. They ban us. It's like they want to use sledgehammer to kill anti, and definitely it will be a counterproductive. Although the government is yet to take a final decision on the proposal, the group hopes that the government will consider their plea to ensure that their members do not lose their means of livelihood. Helen Osamede Kings, TVC News, Abuja. You're watching Nigeria Today. Talking health now, more than 16,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported across 75 countries and territories since the recent outbreak. According to WHO, these cases now include five deaths as the virus continues to rapidly spread globally. There are grave concerns that without a proper response to this growing outbreak, the world might just start battling another pandemic. Health correspondent Kemi Balogo. 
Association is worried at the rapid rate the monkeypox virus is spreading around the world through new modes of transmission. This global outbreak has now been listed as a public health emergency of international concern. But in the same breath, the WHO's assessment is that the risk of monkeypox is moderate globally and in all regions except within the European region where the risk is high. In Abuja, we go out on the streets to get the level of awareness that residents have on monkeypox. We find Peter, who says he has come in close contact with someone living with the disease. I've heard about it and I've seen someone with it, it's just with some big, big pimples, bigger than pimples like this. But inside look watering somehow, so like chicken pox, but it's not chicken pox, this one is very strong also. Monkey pox is now becoming a pandemic too, because it has been discovered about about 90, 70 countries in the world. I don't really know much about it, but I know that it's a disease that is spreading so fast. But I don't know, but the government should just try and do something about it. With about 7.9 billion people still living through the effects of COVID-19, the world is still not quite ready to be battling another global public health emergency of international concern. But with the rapid rate of transmission of the monkeypox, it is still uncertain if Nigeria's health centers, like others around the world, can cope with another huge outbreak such as this. In some hospitals, like the National Hospital, a high level of suspicion is placed on any patient who comes into the emergency unit with symptoms similar to that of monkeypox. From the accident and emergency, once a patient is flagged or suspected, the patient is moved to the isolation ward where we have trained infection control nurses who give the highest possible form of care. Dr. Nnebogo also highlights steps to take to also prevent monkeypox. Preventing it will be in the first place avoiding contact with those animals, avoiding contact with bushmeats, and if you must eat or if you must come in contact with them, make sure it's thoroughly cooked and properly prepared. The World Health Organization also reveals that there is a clear risk of further international spread, but the risk of interference with international traffic remains low at the moment. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja. And staying in the nation's capital, House of Representatives says the security of the nation remains its utmost concern at this trying time in the nation's history. The House leadership also corroborated the position of the Northern Caucus that there are no plots to remove the Speaker. The House leader and leader of the opposition led the team which declared the position of the House at the news conference in the, at the National Assembly. They described the report as fake news that should be discountenanced. House, in every aspect of it, in all ramifications, had never had an instance where we contemplated impeaching our able speaker, right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. In the ranks of the opposition, we have the leader of the opposition seated here with us. There was no such contemplation. There is nothing like any threat to impeach Mr. Speaker. Um, secondly, the issue of a bill or no bill hasn't even been brought before us on the floor for consideration. The work of passing the bill is not, you know, resi resident, you know, within the powers of Mr. Speaker. It's in the House, on the majority. Wh whatever the majority, you know, decide is what will go through. So Some ignorant, uneducated, lazy journalist pounds on this bill and I can guarantee you all this reportage that is going on on our papers were based on ignorance. Ahead of the 2023 general election, a group known as the Consent Yoruba Muslim Scholars in Nigeria has advised Nigerians to choose competence and transformational leadership over religion. This follows reactions by some Nigerians over the choice of Ashiwa Chubola Tinubu to pick a Muslim as his running mate. Olaido Yowali reports. The decision of the All Progressives Congress presidential flag bearer, Ashiwa Chubola Tinubu, to select Kashim Shatima, a fellow Muslim, as his running mate, has sent tongues wagging. These has in turn led to several reactions especially from the apex umbrella body of the Christians in Nigeria, to discredit the move. In 1978, At this press briefing, 
these concerned individuals are asking Nigerians to shun religious and political bigotry, but rather focus on the competency of those who can make positive landmarks in the country. We seek a secure, politically stable, economically prosperous, and religious tolerant Nigeria. As we near 2023, we call on all well-meaning Nigerians to shun campaign of hate, bigotry, and focus on issues of concern for the betterment of people's welfare. It is by doing this that we can have a successful election and chart a new course for our beloved nation. They urge religious leaders to be a source of moral guide to their followers instead of inciting them against one another. Unfortunately, people who are supposed to be a moral guide for a united and prosperous nation have now become agents of the opposition party just for a miserable price. The Islamic group says it is advocating a working Nigeria where all citizens, regardless of their ethno-religious leaning, will be free, confident and prosperous instead of living in hatred. Olaide Oyewale, TVC News, Ibadan. Elsewhere, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria has commenced a one-week entrepreneurship training for youths in Casina under its National Business Skills Development Initiative for 2022. And this is one among several initiatives introduced by Smedan to gainfully engage a sizable number of young people across the country. Jefferson City News correspondent Abdul Latif Yusuf has more. Employed youths in this part of the country are happy to be considered for this batch of training after a rigorous screening process. These trainees will be taught how to start up tailoring and other businesses in order to attain self-reliance. We selected among these 90 participants as truly an honor and we are grateful uh, for, with uh, Smeden for, for finding us worthy of the selection and uh, we promise them that we will make use of the equipment material that will be given to us because um, if you can see now we are facing with uh, challenges of unemployment in this country. So this empowerment training and empowerment material that will be given to us, will, uh, we will try and use them so that we will become self-reliant, so that we will also try and create more and more job opportunities to the teaming youth that are unemployed in this country. The overall idea of the project is to boost entrepreneurship and job creation potentials in youth and reduce idleness during their productive years. Over 90 youths are expected to benefit from this scheme in Katsuna alone, while 3,000 youths are targeted across the country. To date, about 110 PDSPs have been licensed and their names can be found on the agency's website. Interested PDSPs can approach the agency towards commencing the process. In the bid to establish a credible data of MSMEs in Nigeria to complement the national MSME software, the agency is currently undertaking the MSME's mass registration project across the country. This database will enhance evidence-based planning for the wholesome development of the subsector. All MSMEs are encouraged to register as there are numerous benefits to be derived from the exercise. Prospective the initiative is designed to train and offer resettlement packages for trainees after the week-long exercise. The Katsuna State Government is appreciative of the gesture and promise to continue to work closely with the agency. Abdul Latif Yusuf, TVC News, Katsuna.